Hi, this is Asaf, I am zero way. I got Amit Rosenthal, the king of uh, transportation and logistics. Hello, Amit. Hey, Asaf, how are you? How are you, everybody? Everything is good. Uh, we met back at uh, one of the events, I think last year, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> we, we, we usually talk Hebrew, but this time we'll uh, focus on English uh, and share some information about logistics, transportation, and how to be optimize your all logistics, right? Right. Okay, so what, what are you going to discuss today? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for inviting me here in your channel. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, like today we're gonna, dis first of all, I maybe tell a bit about myself. My name is Amit Rosenthal. I'm an owner of Rosenthal Logistics Company. We are a logistics company handling and focused on Amazon sellers and e-commerce in general. And uh, today uh, we set up this, uh, this meeting in regard to the new regulation by Amazon, mainly in regard to IPI score and uh, the, what's happening because of that. Uh, all the sellers in general have uh, limit of inventory they can send to Amazon. So now everybody looking for free PL warehouses, how they can, uh, let's say, uh, solve this issue that uh, Amazon put themselves really near Q4. Uh, yeah, so this is the main topic and we'll discuss a bit about how we can optimize the shipping plan in general. And uh, yeah, this will be the meeting for that. I, get, I, I can tell you that on personal experience, I have one a problem with one of my products. On the yeah. let's go. Amazon do whatever they want, like always, and they uh, increase the IPI from 400 to 500. But we we'll discuss about it later in more details. But yeah. it really, uh, make people or sellers uh, to reassess the uh, number of units they put on stock and right. how they uh, calculate all the logistics around that. Right. Uh, I can add on this stuff that uh, it was basically not exactly the same situation, but different, but same situation, different story. It was by the end of uh, March, start of April, when Amazon again announced last, like uh, March 2020, when the COVID-19 just started to spread in the U.S. So Amazon again uh, advised again the same situation. They limit the products. Uh, that you can ship to Amazon. Then they define it as uh, essential and non-essential goods. So in general, there was the same story that uh, people would like to send cargo to Amazon and then it would be refused and declined by Amazon. So now it's different, sto same story, but different one. Now it's in regard to IPI score and so on. So yeah, let's uh, figure out maybe what solution we have in this regard and what can be done. Okay, and, and there, is, there are a few several alternatives that you can recommend today, and this is what you're going to talk and, and discuss. And your, yeah. your presentation that you, you prepared, so if you want to... Yeah, this is the presentation, so how to optimize your shipping cost. Uh, this is a bit about Rosenthal Company. Uh, we are a family firm. We established more than 80 years ago. We have three sites, Israel, uh, China, and the US. One stop shop for e-commerce in general. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm not sure or stuff that it's uh, too interesting uh, anyone here. Uh, it's interesting me, I see basketball. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a freak of uh, NBA and basketball for all you American uh, viewers here. Uh, playing basketball a lot, uh, Amazon geek. I'm a father for two girls. And, uh, yeah, this is a pretty in short about uh, myself. Which team are you cheering for? Ah, this is a bad story, but in general, I'm a New York Knicks fan. Sorry but uh, yeah, exactly. Anyone uh, knows about NBA and about basketball in general? So to be a uh, to be a New Yorker is uh, pretty much to be a loser, but uh, <laughs> this is history and uh, we try to, to live with what we have in this case. <laughs> uh, so yeah, now uh, here's the situation in regard to IPI. 
I think maybe, uh, maybe Asaf uh, will see first maybe the, the email the customer received by Amazon, or should we regarding, uh, regarding the API, yeah. Yeah, so well, this is the uh, day Amazon sent you an email that's saying, you cannot hold your stock in Amazon. We're going to take you out from Amazon. Inventory performance index score was below 500 for four weeks ago and is now 450 is for general for is for specific uh, customer because the score is still below 500 the storage volume limits will be adjusted for standard size oversize apparel and footwear storage type in addition all products are currently subject to restock quantity limits you can view quantity limits for products on the restock inventory page the restock report but for us, what is important now that uh, all customers in general uh, now can ship maximum 200 units, okay? Or, uh, or this is one option. And second, for new product, right, uh, Asaf? Mm -hmm. For new product, 200 units maximum. And for uh, all products, it depends on your scores, correct? You, this is, you are more professional in this case than me. Yeah, and, and actually they, they give you on, on the inventory planning page where you can see exactly how much cubic feet you can uh, hold uh, for your account. Right, all right. So what generally happened that let's say I take a staff for example, okay, and this is just for example, of course, this is not something that happened. A staff, let's say, uh, planned, okay, to have, I don't know, 5,000 units, 2,000 units, let's say, number of boxes, okay, 50, 100 boxes. I, I order from China, let's say, I order from a Chinese factory to have uh, 5,000 pieces of my product uh, right. to be shipped to be in September, so it, right. it, it, it will be available for Christmas. Exactly. So I think this is for all the sellers, the same situation, and eventually you plan something, you 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 make an order from your Chinese supplier, and then in the moment you are ready to ship the goods, you got this email by by Amazon, and now you facing a problem because you cannot send now all your 100 cartons to FBA directly, and you need to to figure out rather you will send part of the cargo to Amazon, part of the cargo to a 3PL warehouse in China. To in, in the US or store part of the cargo in China, okay? So this is maybe, this is your free option in this regard, what, what you can do. And let's talk first about the options, okay? First of all, to ship part of the goods to Amazon is obvious and all the sellers will do that based on the IPI score, okay? So somebody can ship a 10 carton, other can ship 50 from the 100 carton, but no one will be able to ship all the cartons. So now you have uh, to choose rather to store the cargo at the Chinese for freight forwarder or at your shipper warehouse, or to ship the other part of the goods to a free PL warehouse. What's the, what's the main difference here, okay? In my opinion, and this is a great tip I can provide to the sellers here, in my opinion, even though to ship the goods to a free PL warehouse in the US, uh, it will cost higher cost eventually in regard to storage fee, delivery, and so on. The, 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 the pros in this regard is that you will have much more uh, uh, capability uh, to have great logistics management. And the reason why, that if you ship the goods to the US, and let's say your, your demand to the product is higher, okay, and you sell uh, instead of 20 units per day, now you sell in the Q4 50 or 100 units per day, so you will have more control on the cargo itself when you need to ship more goods to Amazon by their inventory management, okay? And what I mean by that, okay, so let's say you have now 1,000 units at Amazon, okay? And your selling rate is 100 per day, so you have, met, you have enough inventory for 10 days. This is right, uh, Asaf? Right. Okay, so now, now, you can, now you can start arrange the other goods need to ship to Amazon based on this uh, selling rate, okay? So let's say your 
3PL warehouse now is in uh, California, and you need to ship the goods to Dallas or somewhere in California area. So you know it will take from the moment you ask the warehouse to send the goods to the FBA center, it will take something around two to three days in total, okay? If the goods were now sits in China, so your inventory management was much more difficult because instead of ship the goods in two to three days from the moment you ask the warehouse, now you need to ship the goods from China if it's by air, so the cost will be higher cost, minimum now in Air Express shipment is around seven to eight dollars per kilo. And there is a high chance that the goods will not arrive at Amazon on time. So the, so the reason why better to keep an inventory at the US is mainly because of inventory management and the control on the goods and the selling rate and the deliver the goods to Amazon based on the selling rate. Clear here? Yes, and then uh, if another option or to add to this option, why uh -huh. to keep the stock in the US mm -hmm. on the time between that your stock goes to uh, your warehouse to Amazon, yeah. you need to register also as an FBM seller. So you right. never lose your ranking. So you'll right. be able uh, to continue selling your products to potential uh, shoppers and right. you never lose ranking. So in between, you keep on one hand, you keep it, your, uh, the stock in the warehouse, the 3PL, some right. stocks in Amazon. Once right. you, you need to ship between both warehouses, you have a guarantee that uh, you have uh, stocks to, to it sell. It will be on time. Yeah. It will be on time. It will be on time. Exactly. Another thing that you just added now, Asaf, that if you put the inventory at a Chinese, China warehouse, okay? So eventually it's for storage only and it eventually is waiting for you, green light, to ship the goods to Amazon or to US. If you put the cargo at 3PL warehouse, the, bigger, the biggest advantage in my opinion is that you can skip sell as FBA and, and not putting all your eggs in one basket, meaning you can sell on FBA and selling on FBM as well. And uh, in my opinion, it always a ben it's always a beneficiary to not putting all your eggs in one basket and split your chances uh, with Amazon. Meaning you have one marketplace by Amazon and another marketplace indeed by Amazon, but you're doing this by FBM and not by FBA. And I think it's a bigger advantage. Uh, another issue that we just discussed now is in regard to uh, uh, SFP, yeah, Asaf? Yes, yes, we... SFP, which is Amazon Seller Fulfillment Prime by FBM, okay? So uh, anyone doesn't know about this platform by Amazon, so maybe Asaf is a good idea. We will put a link below. Yes, uh, uh, SFP uh, is actually where you are uh, selling to Prime users directly for your warehouse. Okay, and and right. this is a big advantage. There are some criteria that you need to, to meet uh, right. to get to a, get approved by, by Amazon and right. to send a request. But it's very good. It's a great op op chance to continue selling even when your uh, stock ran out on FBA. Exactly. And uh, as long as you keep, I think me and Asaf just uh, view this, uh, this platform in general, if you are uh, able or your where, your free PL warehouse are able to sustain the prime uh, the prime fulfillment by Amazon, meaning two days to ship the goods to the end user. So I think it's a great platform and a great chance. And honestly, anyone that doesn't know this platform should at least check it out. Okay. Again, Asaf, in general, there is two options for uh, sellers that using 3PL. One is only for storage. Uh, they are bringing goods to a, to a 3PL warehouse. The, store, the 3PL will store the goods and deliver the goods to FBA when demand by the customer. Okay, this is option one. Option two is that the warehouse will do a full FBM 
And this regards the, the free peer, a good free peer warehouse I can add, should, should uh, interact with your uh, seller account during uh, via IPI and uh, have, have the, f and in general should be uh, in control with your seller account, meaning when you or any, any seller uh, now have a purchase order from an end customer, so the free pair warehouse should integrate directly with the with your seller account and ship the goods directly to the customer. This, I think, first thing, I should look into a free pair warehouse. Uh, second, of course, is like everything, uh, need to have a good communication with the warehouse, with the person in charge there. Third thing, I think, which is crucial, of course, is the rate, okay, eventually, each customer selling in doesn't matter if it's via FBA or FBM. Eventually, each seller would like to gain more as much profit as possible. Okay, mm -hmm. and a free pair warehouse in general. If we're now talking about logistics only, okay, if we're sending goods to FBM, okay, if we're now talking about ocean freight or general uh, logistics freight. If we take the same goods, ship it to FBA center in California, let's say, or ship the goods to a free PL warehouse in California, so the logistics cost will be lower to FBA. And the reason behind it, that uh, normally we have direct, direct route and non-direct route, okay? Uh, for the main warehouses, main FBA warehouses in US, okay? we are going by direct route. What does it mean, direct route? Meaning that we take the container, release it at port, and ship it directly to Amazon, okay? In this case, the cost, the shipping cost will be lower, all right? If we need to ship the goods to free PL warehouse, as long as it shipped as an LCL, okay? Less than truckload, okay? And, and not a full container. What we are doing in this case, we need to ship the goods to our warehouse first in the US, Palletize the goods at the free, palletize the goods at our warehouse and then ship it to the free PL, meaning we are doing a two time delivery, one to our warehouse and the second one is to the final warehouse and palletize the, palletize the goods as well. So the cost, the logistic cost to the free PL will be higher. So first of all, the logistic cost to the free PL will be higher. Second of course, second of all, you need to consider the cost of the free PL itself. So your margin will be decreased for sure, okay? If you're using a free PL. This is something everybody needs to remember, okay? But again, we are now facing a problem that we have no other option, okay? So this we need to remember. So as long as we have no other option and we need to split the goods and sh ship part of the goods to FBN, part of the goods to free PL, so we have, we in general doesn't have any other options. So this is how we should act, okay? Okay, so, so in other words, it's very important to know to choose your 3PL partner based on a uh, location, okay? And yeah. What you said, because it depends how far the 3PL is from the port on one hand. And yeah. the second thing, it's related to how far the 3PL is from Amazon warehouse. Right, right. And I think, I think Asaf in this, again, I never saw anything in Amazon, but you for sure can uh, prove what I'm saying, that uh, in general, when you ship the same product, you receive the same FBA center. Meaning if you ship the goods to, let's say, LX9 at California or to OMT8, so most likely you will receive the same uh, FBA center when you open a new shipping plan from the free PL, okay? So let's say now the goods are still in China, okay? And you figure out which free PL to use. I would consider, first of all, the end location, the F end FBA location are usually received by Amazon. So if you receive a FBA in California, choose a free PL in California. If you receive a free PL in Dallas, choose one in Dallas. If you receive one in, I don't know, in Washington, okay, or in Georgia, try to locate a free pair in the area because the main cost in logistics always is the inland trucking logistics at the destination, meaning the inland logistics at 
US will be the priority cost of your of your shipping cost. Okay. So if you if you are if you are uh, now if the the main cost is the engine tracking. So if you are now choose a free PL warehouse in in California and you need to ship it to Atlanta. So the engine cost will definitely uh, finish all your margin on the project on the on the product itself. So better to understand your location first. Okay. Okay, so if I I'm, I'm, would like to summarize the IPA index that uh, Amazon has made uh, us sellers to use a different alternative to store our products because they are limiting the space for the holiday period. So right. our options is to go and move the store uh, stock to trivial services. And once you're planning uh, which 3PL to choose, you also need to consider the location of FBA, your Amazon warehouse, in regard to the distance from the warehouse uh, to the 3PL. Exactly. And all of that to consider it, all of this uh, data need to consider even before you are sending out your stock from China. Exactly. So if you are China, you order the, 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 the stock to be ready for the holiday period, you need actually to divide uh, uh, the shipment into two different types of uh, warehouses. One uh, directly to Amazon to save the time and to save the, the, the costing. And the second shipment should go directly to the 3PL. And right. in between when you have the stock in the 3PL, you can use FBM as alternative once you're running out of stock on FBA. So you never, uh, your listing will never go out uh, of ranking and you continue getting ranking on your listing. Okay. Right, second criteria I think Asaf uh, that the customer should consider and especially at that time of the, that time of the year and mainly again due to COVID-19 and what is going on by in Amazon now, okay. Uh, our company handles, I don't know, something around 800 customers, okay? And I can definitely say now, uh, after we review many, many shipments that we are doing per month, that there is super, it takes super, super, super slow to Amazon to receive the goods and, uh, and change the status to receiving, okay? Sometimes it can take two days, sometimes it's, it can take a month, a month and a half, it's really depend on the shipping method, okay? Shipping going by uh, UPS or FedEx or as a loose cartons take really forever, okay? So if now the customer planning to ship the goods, let's say to, I don't know, to FTW1 in Dallas, that now the situation is the real chaotic in the bad way, okay? In the bad manner. And the general transit time from China by C, okay, to FTW1, usually is about 30 days. So now you should consider almost 60 days, okay, until you will review the goods under receiving status at Amazon. So another good option, this is another reason why ship to a free pay warehouse is a good reason, because at least you will have stock to start selling the goods at, okay, and then, once the goods will be at Amazon and under status receiving and you can sell the goods, okay, or under status closed, and then you can really sell it, okay, under Prime as well. So, again, this is a good beneficiary why to use a free PL warehouse and it's highly recommended these days, okay? Totally good, with you. yes. All right. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Or oh, anything else about the free PL? Let's talk about the fire that you... With the discussion about the fire in, in Amazon warehouse. Yeah, so... Uh, what, what's happened to the stock over there? Ooh, so uh, listen, there is... Uh, maybe I can find a bit later here a photograph of uh, what happened there, okay? Or article, but I think the, the, the fire was uh, at ONT6, ONT6, which is a FBA center of Amazon. And what happened that many, many, many of the goods were totally destroyed. Part of the goods are part damaged and part of the goods are okay. So what Amazon did, 
They are now uh, shift the goods uh, parts to other warehouses in the uh, California area and parts to FTW1 in Dallas. And what happened by that, that the receiving time uh, just becoming a nightmare to everyone, okay? Uh, many clients, uh, as, I, as I advised earlier, many clients advise us that goods have been delivered with POD, signed POD, POD is proof of delivery, okay? We've signed POD by UPS, by a truck, by it doesn't matter which carrier you're going to, it's take really something between a week to a month and a half, and I even heard about a specific incident that took more than two months, the goods to be, to enter to Amazon and change the status from in transit to receiving. Uh, this is, in my opinion, this is a huge, huge, huge blow to the customers, to the sellers in general. Uh, and the reason for that is that, uh, again, the main difficulty in logistics and in general, I think for Amazon sellers, is to have a good inventory management. And if you define that, and you know already, that ship the goods to California area, okay, take around 24 days, and the goods are being delivered, let's say, on time, okay? And I will discuss a bit more on this later, okay? But let's say something between 24 to 30 days, the goods arrive to Amazon, you're already to sell, you're almost without inventory, and now it's take a month to Amazon just to change the status to receiving. So meaning you have now three weeks, at least three weeks without inventory to sell. So this is a huge blow. And I think all the sellers now uh, need to focus on this tip and try to push your uh, shipper for earlier production date, okay? Pay, this, pay your shipper earlier and ship the goods earlier than you usually do, especially now because of this situation. Because if you want the goods to be ready to sell, okay, ready to sell in start of October, okay, start of October is a month and a half from now, so a good tip would be to ship the goods today, today. Yeah. Uh, orders, orders to China needed to be made last month. If you want to, yeah, meet exactly. October, you want to meet October uh, to get your stock in Amazon and on 3PL, you needed to get your order last month and start shipping it now. Exactly. So again, this is a huge blow and it's a change. Totally, I think the, the inventory management for the seller, part of them doesn't know, part of them say to me, hey, listen, it's not your problem, it does your problem, doesn't matter. Eventually, you as a seller need an inventory on, the on time at FBA Center to sell. Otherwise, your ranking decrease, you will not have uh, inventory to sell, and eventually your business is closed. So, best thing to do is pay maybe a bit extra cost for storage fee at Amazon, but to ship the goods on time. And now with no other option, use also 3PL warehouse. So at least if you don't have inventory at the FBA center, you will have inventory at 3PL to sell to your shoppers at Amazon. Maybe you know, do you know uh, how much delay was for goods that were supposed to ship to this specific warehouse that was burned out uh, and didn't arrive to this warehouse, you know, because when shopper, uh, probably sellers, there was some goods on the way to this warehouse. And once the goods arrived to this warehouse, there, there is no warehouse, right? So you need, yeah. you need to route it to other warehouses. So yeah. It created a lot of delay in, in, in stock for different sellers. Right, this, this is one thing that happened. And again, I'm telling you the second thing that happened that now is the majority of the issue that, that again, I can, I, can, I can give you an example, okay? Let's say, uh, you know, for, for cargo that need to be delivered by truck, okay? Which is not one of uh, Amazon carrier partners like UPS or FedEx and so on, okay? There is millions of different, uh, trucking company in the U.S. that ship goods to Amazon, okay? So in this case, the carrier needs to set an, a meeting appointment with Amazon, okay? Now, before it was happened, before the fire, 
usually what we did, we release the goods and we ship the goods something about three to four, five days max after the goods been released from port and from customs, okay? Now, meeting time can be, again, mainly in California and in Dallas area, can be a month and a month and a half ahead, okay? So, so what usually took, I don't know, 24, 30 days, now can easily be 40, 45, 50 days. So what we do, uh, we're trying to use a different meeting time that we set in advance, okay? And try to use them to ship the goods earlier, okay, in behalf of our customer. But again, the situation, I'm, I'm working with Amazon for three years, until the COVID-19, everything was, let's say, most of the time, okay, 90% of the time, everything was normal. We didn't face any majority delays with the delivery itself. But now there is a major, major uh, uh, delay with the appointments. This is one thing. Second thing that happened a lot of times that uh, we received an appointment by Amazon, by the way, okay? This is the, this is the crazy thing that we are receiving an appointment by Amazon specific, bring the goods when Amazon requests us to bring the goods. And then we, they said to us, okay, we cannot uh, receive the goods now. We reject the container. Please come back, I don't know, in a week, okay? So think about how crazy is this. And then, and then the sign on the POD itself, okay, proof of delivery, sign reject. So just understand the, the chaos we are facing here every, every day. This is one thing. Second thing that if we choose, let's say, um, if, the, if the customer choose Amazon carrier, okay, delivery by uh, UPS deliver, or air freight, okay, which is always done by the delivery done by UPS or FedEx, okay? So we have a signed POD at the tracking system by, let's say, UPS, okay? We have signed POD. We see the goods being delivered, I don't know, on August 5th, and the customer advises us that they see the goods under processing or under changes status to in transit or something only a three, three weeks, a month later. So I have an example of goods being delivered in mid-June, okay, mid-June, and the goods being changed to status receiving only by the end of July. So think about you as a seller, think about you as a seller, uh, organize everything, you know, according to the book, everything is set done, you pay extra cost for air freight, for instance, and then the goods taking about a three months until it changed the, the status from the moment you ship the goods in China until the goods really ready to sell on Amazon. This is crazy, and I'm telling you, it has a huge, huge, huge blowout and impact on the seller itself. But again, uh, you know, Amazon is the god, and uh, we have to act accordingly. <laughs> ah, if we hear, by the way, it's a good to, to understand. Uh, Asaf, do you understand commercial terms? What does it mean, Xworks? What does it mean for DDU terms, DDP, and so on? Personally, me, I do because I was working for some industrial companies in the past. In the past, they did uh, international uh, sales, so yeah. I'm familiar with the, the terms. Uh, but right. I think it's very important to sellers that don't specialize is to really uh, uh, understand what is each one of the terms and what they need to use when they talking with different type of uh, logistics. Shippers, apps. shippers as well, shippers as well, okay. Uh, all right, so this is a general question and Asaf, I'm telling you, as a logistics company owner, I think I get this, put, this question, something between five to 10 times a, a day, okay from experts and from new sellers. So let's maybe try once and for all, do a, a quick introduction about commercial time and what does it mean, okay? And I will review it quite fast, okay? There is, when you uh, negotiate with a shipper in China or in India or in Vietnam, or doesn't matter where, okay? There is two main commercial terms. One defined as X works, okay? and the other one defined as FOB, okay? The main difference between the two, that when you ship, when you uh, ask for a, a, when you ask for a, let's say for this pen, okay? For a rate for this pen under Xbox, okay? Meaning the shipper need to put the goods on the warehouse door, okay? So now as a freight forwarder, okay? 
need to collect the goods from the warehouse, do the inland delivery in China, for example, the export customs, okay, and ship the goods out from China, okay? When we discuss about FOB, same pen, okay, same, we see, same pen now need to be shipped, the inland delivery and the export custom done by the shipper itself, okay? So if we now buy this one pen, okay, under Xbox term, so the cost, let's say, will be $1, okay? If we take the same pen and ask the shipper to purchase this under FOB terms, so he will include the inland uh, logistics at China and the export clearance, and he will say, okay, now the pen costs $1.2. Okay, understand here? Okay, so let me, let me define it. So the Xbox, Xbox is actually usually what you buy when you're ordering from uh, Chinese factories, okay? Uh, but if you're going to negotiate with them and ask them to do it FOB, it will be their responsibility to deliver the goods to the port and right. get customs on the port. So right. the main difference right. is that who is paying for the inland delivery in China and paying a, a, a custom clearance. Right. So then, if, there is a big difference then if you take in this pen, one dollar, uh, if you're doing it on x -works, then you need to pay probably extra few hundred dollars just for to deliver in China and clear the goods uh, on customs. Right. But right. if you take in this pen again and you're paying FOB one dollar, you saved yourself a few, few hundred dollars. Right, but this, but this few hundred dollars and this stuff need to understand, okay, will eventually pay to the freight forwarder, okay? So in my opinion, eventually, okay, eventually, it doesn't really matter if you're doing a business under Xbox or under FOB because rather you will pay it to the shipper or rather you will pay it to the freight forwarder, okay? The only thing I can add on this, okay, that it custom, it custom to ship from China goods under FOB. I have no idea why, but again, eventually, if the shipper paying the trucking company and do the, the export clearance by himself, he will, he will, he will add, he will add this margin, okay, on top of the product itself. So it doesn't matter if you, if you're doing X works and pay this cost to the freight forwarder, or you're doing FOB and pay this cost to the shipper itself, okay? Eventually, the difference between Xbox to FOB, or when the shipper do this in behalf of you or your freight forwarder, it almost be the same cost, okay? So if you guys ask if what better to use Xbox or FOB, really, in my opinion, there is no real difference, okay? Okay. Just better to understand, it's good to understand the, the definition, okay, between the two. Uh, the second and the third and the fourth definition is DDU and DDP, okay? DDU meaning delivery duty unpaid, and DDP meaning delivery duty paid, okay? Now there is a huge, huge difference between US and Europe, because in Europe there is a VIT, which is 20%, which is not included in, uh, in US. In US, we have only tax and duties, okay? But I can definitely say that uh, many, 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 uh, let's say if you ship, let's say this, this pen, okay? Again, you ship this pen, 100 cartons, uh, you will ship the goods under DDU, you will have, let's say, just for the example, the cost, the shipping cost, you will have 10 CBM in total, okay? The shipping cost will be $100 per CBM, so $1,000 under DDU. Then you will need to add, after goods being released at US, you will need to add the duty and tax, okay? If you ask for your freight forwarder to do a shipment under DDP, so we can say to you, listen, the cost will be $120, okay? But this will be including the duty and the tax. For the, let's say, less professional sellers, okay? Uh, a good idea is to use DDP because you will know in advance your total cost. You will know, okay, I will need to pay now $1,200, let's say, for the product. And this is my logistic cost. So it's easier to define your total cost for the product itself and know 
your uh, final margin. Clear? Yeah, so again, if I'm choosing DDU, for example, okay, I need yeah. someone in the US to make a custom clearance for me, right? And, and right. So this is the main, main difference. In, in both different... In both no, 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 Asaf, sorry, but no. In both cases, you need a freight forwarder to do the clear, clearance in your behalf, okay? In both cases. But in one case, the duty and the tax will add later after the goods being released, okay? And the second option is that you will know the rate in advance, including the, the duty and the tax. So let's say now the rate, as, as I mentioned, can be $1,000, and then you will need to know the duty percentage and what will be the eventual the duty and the tax you pay or you said this and i prefer to know in advance how much i pay i i prefer to pay a bit a bit higher cost but to know my cost uh, before i ship the goods so i can easily uh, identify my margin and my total cost on the product so who should use the ddu for example uh, did you did you people that know their HS code, okay, and they know they have a low uh, duty percentage on the goods itself, will prefer to use DDU. A new seller that doesn't know the HS code, looking to know the the total cost in advance, will choose DDP. Okay. Right. Uh, all right. Now. Uh, I have a map here, okay, of transit time uh, for air and sea shipping, okay? Now this is uh, to a free PL or to Amazon directly, okay? Of course, I could not uh, cover all United, all United States and transit time are significantly different to a different marketplace like uh, Brazil, Canada, uh, Europe, okay? But uh, again, most of the sellers in Amazon selling on the US market, so let's discuss about the US market now, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about air freight, okay, we have two options, and uh, again, we're not doing now a all logistics session, we are doing this quite fast. Uh, we have two options. One is Air Express, and the second option is Air Regular, okay? Uh, same transit day, cover mainly all the US, okay? If we're choosing Air Express, we are talking about two to four days approximately from the goods departure from China. And if we're using Air Regular, okay? Uh, Air Regular meaning we are using commercial airline from China to US. Usually it's... Uh, a non-direct flight, okay, and then the carrier, the end carrier will be one of Amazon Care, such as UPS or FedEx. Uh, in this case, the approximately transit time will be 10 to 14 days, and again, it covers all the United States, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if you go to FBA center or you're going to a free pay warehouse, it's the same. If we are now talking about C freight, this is totally different. Ah, and by the way, the cost for air freight, again, doesn't matter the location, the cost will be the same, okay? okay. But in sea freight, it's totally different. First of all, the transit time can be significantly uh, different between a uh, location, and we will uh, add a bit more on this a bit later. And also the cost can be significantly, significantly different between the areas, okay? so. Uh, you see, I have here a map, okay, and this is on the regular days, not uh, with the COVID-19 and everything now and with Amazon. Uh, of course, the global is, uh, is uh, rounded, okay, is the round one. And uh, the, the routing between China to US is going directly, okay. And the first seaport uh, from China is Long Beach at Los Angeles, okay? So the shortest time, transit time will be always to Los Angeles. Uh, and the end port at US is New York, okay? So just for example, just transit time port to port only, okay? From US to, from China to US to Los Angeles is around 
let's say 14 to 16 days from China to New York can be 33 to 30 to 33 days, okay? So it's significant. So people choosing free PL warehouse, let's say in New York, okay, should consider after the goods being released from customs, going to free PL warehouse to, to palletize before delivery and then deliver the goods can be easy around 40 days, 40 to 45 days, depends on location. If you're going to main United States, uh, central, central United States, it can even be 50 days, okay? But if you're choosing a free PL warehouse in California or in Dallas area, so the transit time is something around 22 to, to 30 days approximately, okay? So there is a ma major, major difference in this regard. And for people choosing free PL warehouse, I think it's significant information, okay? Second is in regard to price, okay? And again, price is only in regard to logistics now, okay? I'm not talking about the free PL warehouse. Price only about the logistics from China to US. The price uh, to Los Angeles, Dallas area can be something around 100 to 150, $160 per CBM, depending on the volume, of course. And going to East Coast, okay, or main, uh, main US area can even go to 200, $250 per CBM. So the difference is significant. So when you choosing a free PL warehouse, also consider the cost and the... Right, so there is a lot of factors to be considered there uh, in regards to which free PL to use, rather the cost, rather the transit time, rather the where is your final FBA warehouse located. Every seller should uh, have all this information uh, in front of them when choosing a free PL warehouse. Uh, but again, now there is a limitation by Amazon, so we doesn't, the seller doesn't have really any other option. Uh, so yeah, good luck on that, everybody. And, and Amit, I have a question. How do you support sellers uh, when somebody contacting you and asking your services, uh, shipping out some goods to the US? Would you uh, help them to do this type of decisions? Yeah, so... Thank for this question, Asaf. Uh, I can definitely say that uh, the past two, the high price cost started two weeks ago, right? Yeah. So around two weeks ago, so the high price regulation. So I think every day since I got minimum three to four phone calls a day uh, just to discuss about this topic. Uh, I have a conversation with customers here from beginner sellers to really advanced one with uh, 1,000 to 1,500 CBM just of goods in the US, okay? So there are high, high, high uh, sellers. Uh, everybody looking for the same. It's like, you know, this is uh, coming from nowhere to the sellers. Uh, there is millions of factors here to decide. So usually when I'm uh, discussing about this topic, conversation can be from two minutes to honestly one hour, okay? Uh, I think this is a service that I personally, okay, and Rosenthal is a group. Uh, we believe in personal touch to the client and uh, we are here for everybody, for any question they have or for any advice they needed on how to ship, where to ship, what uh, different type of... Uh, of a shipping method to use and uh, yeah feel feel free to contact us okay so so actually you're covering uh, the plan for also for you can identify which uh, uh, type of freight to use sea freight uh, in terms of calculating the costing to which type of port they need to ship uh, the goods and then on to which and you can recommend on which area of 3pl uh, they, they should use based on their FBA uh, final destination. And, right. and, and so you, you, you are actually uh, providing a, a consultation that covers all aspects of the logistics. Yeah, I think, I've, yeah, uh, thank you on this. I think, the, I think Asaf, the main thing for us, okay, as a company, and honestly, I do believe this in 100% and deep in my heart, 
that, uh, yeah, we have automatic rate uh, services and people ask us for quote by email and so on. But I think the main power of us, and uh, honestly, this is how we became uh, seven figure sellers, okay? If I'm talking about uh, annual revenue, uh, is to try to provide a personal touch and to really be to our customer, okay? And by that, I know that, uh, you know, as a seller, you have millions of factors that you need to be covered. PPC, photography, uh, negotiation with shippers, logistics, Amazon, and so on. So, and I know logistics is a part that usually a seller would like to just give it to the shipper or give it to the freight forwarder and that's it. And uh, you mentioned when the goods are ready and when, uh, and that's it. But we are, we are trying to provide a higher service and to support our client, not only by a good shipping cost, but a good, good consolation as well. Great. Uh, anything else that you want to show us? Uh... All right. So to summarize this uh, meeting, the stuff in regard to shipping, 3PL, and in general, shipping is not a hobby, and there is endless optimization possibilities. Talk to the experts for best results and provide your shipping history. Uh, it's easy if you do it smart. The... And, and many factors. Thank you. Yes, and many factors can uh, affect actually your decision. Uh, and I think that any sellers that uh, launching a product, okay, or also already have a product in FBA, before he's doing his next order from China, from the factory for the product, he can always reassess all the logistic process. And, and especially if, if you have already some data about previous shipment that you use and, and different uh, type of methods that you use on logistics, it's, it's really good, good to assess it on every order before making any orders to, to your products from the factory. So, 100%. Because you, need, you can always optimize because it's very difficult to make money on Amazon, okay? So right. but if you're making your logistic process very uh, uh, clean and, and, and very sweet and fast and, and you don't spend time and extra money on the way and leaving the money on, 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 on different services on the way, uh, you can maximize your profit in Amazon. Right. I can definitely advise yourself, definitely, okay, that in your logistics, you always spend the money, okay? Always. You will spend the money that you don't earn nothing from logistics. But 100%, if you choose a good freight forwarder, it can save you a lot of cost yearly around. And eventually, all this cost you save in the logistics is beneficial to your pocket directly. So this, every seller need to remember. Okay, Amit, it was a very useful information. Uh, I, I really did learn a lot today about uh, all the optimization and what needs to be considered uh, through the logistic process. Uh, do you have any uh, other final tips uh, to share with us? Uh, be smart and uh, stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go without a mask. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, I mean, uh, I really appreciate for time for, for having uh, this information with, with the group. Uh, many Amazon sellers, you know, can take this information and save a lot of money thanks to this session. And, you know, I appreciate your time. Asaf, thank you and appreciate your time as well. Thank you, everybody, and uh, good luck and be safe. Okay. Thanks.